All right, here we go. Howdy, Jason Lewis here, and it's the middle of the week. I got the day off of work, and what am I gonna do? Yeah, of course I'm gonna play with Pinto the dog back there, but the rest of the day, I'm gonna be in here in the Mustang doing brake lines. So hopefully by the end of today, I will show you how to design and install a full brake system for your car with some just basic tools. And here are those tools, a line cutter and flare tool, a coat hanger or wire, some basic bending tools, an assortment of end fittings, a nut riveter, sheet metal screws will work, I just really like these little dudes, and some brake line. Now here's a cool thing that happened since the last Mustang video I've done. A YouTuber named Uber Tanker left a comment about suggesting that I try Nikop or nickel copper brake lines and it got me intrigued. His little comment got me intrigued. So I did some research and this stuff looks pretty cool. Never heard of it myself. Um, and there you go. If you stay open, we're going to go ahead and switch it up. I'm throwing out the stainless steel that I was going to use on this car. I ordered one roll of the nickel copper and the Nikop line. And what he says is that it bends like mild steel, but it lasts like stainless steel because it's made out of nickel and copper, obviously, so it doesn't rust. And sure enough, you know, I've just done a couple test bends and it is really nice to work with. So thanks, Uber Tanker. We're going to go ahead and have some fun with this Nikop line. Now to give you guys an idea of the cost, yeah, it's a little bit more expensive than mild steel, not quite as expensive as stainless. So a roll of this stuff costs 50 bucks. So then once you get all of the pieces on the car that need plumbing, like all of the calipers on all four wheels and the master cylinders on the firewall, then it's just a matter of hitting those targets with plumbing. And then if it's easier for you, you could just draw up a diagram. But what I do is I just picture it in my head. I say, okay, I'm gonna need XYZ fittings. I'm gonna need so-and-so amount of line. And then you just start planning on all of the junctions and how to get from point A to point B and hit those targets. Now since this brake system is being installed from scratch and there's no factory parts left to it, you have to install either a switch on the brake pedal to trigger the brake lights or you can actually install a pressure switch like this one in line that you can just use this as your brake light sender to trigger the brake lights. And so I just put that in line and this will just go in the front someplace. All right, here we go. So. Now for the obligatory sitting in your engine compartment shot. Uh, here's where home base is. This is all of our master cylinders. This is the Willwood brake and clutch. So we have front brake master cylinder, rear brake master cylinder, and then the clutch master cylinder will hook up later. I'm gonna do a hydraulic clutch obviously, and I'll show you how that's gonna go later. Now, from here, I just want a place to be able to not run hard wire right to these things. So that way you could service this stuff and makes it a little bit nicer, a little bit easier to work on. So I went ahead and made this little uh, bracket right here out of sheet metal and then just mounted two bulkhead fittings, dash three, since this whole thing's gonna be, like we talked about in the earlier vid video, AN dash three fittings. So that's a single flare fitting. Now. What I did was I had a single here that should go to the rear. So this now will go from this master cylinder to the rear. And then this will plumb to the T here, which will split the braking to the front, both front tires. So let's get that done. So you, I'm gonna use a flex line and to go from, now I'm not doing final install yet, I'm just showing you this. You wouldn't put a little bit of Teflon on this because that's an NPT, a national pipe thread, fitting into the master cylinder. And then we're gonna run a flex line down, since that's the rear. Now you don't need to make a silly bracket like this, but I just think that that looks really trick and it just, is it serves the purpose of really identifying what's happening here. So I know that that is my line to the rear and then my hard line, you'll see in a few minutes, will come up to this. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this is, since we're making this brake line, this brake system from scratch, this is the brake pressure sensor for the brake light. So we can put that in later, wire that in later. 
So another NPT fitting. Now, another thing to remember is that you could do 90s, 45 straights out of all of these things. And it's just personal preference. Like to me, I think, I think this is gonna work best. Let's see. And let's see, do we wanna go behind there? Ooh, yeah, look at that. Holy mackerel. So I think what we'll do is we'll keep this kind of like that, and then we'll stabilize those hoses later. But now you get an idea of what I'm going for, and then you can form that up later. And now, voila, you have the home base, and this is now our final target. Since this flex line takes up this last little bit, this is gonna be our hard line target. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend up a quick piece that'll go from here, and then this is a Dash 3 AN bulkhead fitting, similar to this, to, actually it's a, similar to this one right here, and then this one will go flex line out to the Willwood front brake caliper. I'll show you that outside part in a minute, but let's go bend this up and get this installed. And through the magic of video, there is the S-Bend that I just made up for this, and that's just a typical single flare like I showed you in the last video. I'll go through a couple of those for you in this one just to show you again, but that will mount there, and to there, and boom, check one, that wheel, done. All right. So, again, I'm not going to bore you with all of the details, but basically, I take my little section of coat hanger, and I start from one end, like I did on this one, I started from here, and from the bulkhead that goes through the shock tower there, I started making my bends, and then had it end right here, and then continued that across here, but here is the piece of nickel copper or NICOP tubing, all bent up pretty. And you can kind of see, it's very easy. And this stuff is, take my word for it, really great to work with. So you can see how I transferred that pattern over to that. And let's see how it fits. Screw this side on. Okay. That will go like that. This will mount right here to the bottom of my T. Now, there's always room for final tweaking there, but you can kind of see the initial position is pretty darn good. Follow some contours, you know, looks on purpose. This looks really, really handsome and trick and on like I meant to do it, and that's kind of the key. So now I'm gonna show you how to uh, attach this. We're gonna attach this in three spots, I'm thinking. One right here in the middle, one right here over on the, one on the end, and one over on the other end as well. And that'll just kind of keep everything in place and right where we want it, keep the vibration down. And that's another little tip that I'm gonna share with you and it's how to use these riv nuts instead of sheet metal screws through your firewall or any other places where we're going to mount this stuff to uh, give you a little bit higher quality look and um, it just it's better than just having a sheet metal sc screw going through your firewall here and a hose clamp so check this out all right so basically a riv nut is just this little tiny insert here and what we do is we're going to drill a quarter inch hole where we want to mount that and then that'll be the thing that we use to capture the hose and these are the little doodads you could use whatever you want to capture your lines but these are just these cool little aluminum deals from low car that i'm going to use i bought these for a project years ago so that looks about right, right there. So just about, what I'll do is I'll center it to this hole. We'll just get the level right. 
So let's go right there. I'm going to use a punch and drop both of those things on the ground. Now, of course, you know, <laughs> it's like a balancing act in here. I'm going to hit my head three times. I'm way back down. Uh, yeah. Oh, ow. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. No, I'm kidding. And then you drill quarter inch hole. First, make sure there's nothing behind it. I have my uh, HVAC system right there and I don't want to ruin it. Okay. Deburr that hole a little bit. All right, and now what I'm going to do, before I put that little insert in, I'm just going to take this little paint pen and just dab a little bit of paint inside that area just to help for rust corrosion. So you just screw this on like you would, you would insert a ribbon into this thing, put it into the hole so it's flush, and then, okay, and now you just unthread that. Okay, now let's get this first one installed. And then just tighten that down. Boom. We have our first one in place. Now it's just a matter of lather, rinse, repeat for the remaining mounting tabs. And then you sit back and admire your work. Hey, Bidjo. <laughs> That's my dog wondering what I'm doing in the engine compartment and why I'm not out throwing the Frisbee or kicking her soccer ball. But uh, here's that brake line install up close and personal so you can kind of see the point of that. It looks real good. All right, so now that we have the inside of the engine compartment area plumbed and through to this bulkhead that goes right into the shock tower. Now the stock fitting, the stock fitting would go all the way up to here to the front of this frame rail area. Now we're gonna change that because uh, we don't have to play by those games. We just have to find a nice elegant place for it to come through, not interfere with any of the suspension or wheel or wheel travel. I'm gonna use the 90 NPT into the back of the cal caliper here. Now for final, you would use a little Teflon thread sealant on that, but for now, we're just getting this mocked into place. So I'm just gonna give that a quick tighten and I'll show you after just eyeballing all of this stuff, how I came up with this location. And so then the flex line now can run right through here, right underneath the control, the upper control arm, attached to the dash three fitting on the caliper. So this NPT fitting goes up the caliper here towards the ball joint. And then what I'll do is I will use a zip tie or something to just stabilize this line. Now, see, as you know, you can see full right lock, no binding, no kinking, full left lock, all good. Now the front is physically done. Now it's time to jump underneath and run the line from the rear axle up to here. And what that means is a whole bunch of crawling under the car, taking careful measurements, using your coat hanger template in those complicated areas, being stalked by your dog and her soccer ball and running out into the yard and kicking it a few times. All right, go get it. And then transferring those bends from your coat hanger template to that long run of tubing. All right, now that I've got my tube bent and that's just matching the front and rear, same coat hanger I just did the rear, found a spot, marked it, measured the run along the trans tunnel, even did a little nook right here, 
and uh, for the uh, support that goes over the trans tunnel under the sheet metal. Then made the final bends here that match my last little template. And now it's time to flare that. Now here's a fun little thing you don't want to do. Is I almost just forgot these darn cameras to put <laughs> the actual fitting on the end. So that's just the dash three fitting and the little collar. And let's flare the last bit of this thing and get it in the car and I'll show you how it looks. I like to have just about a tenth of an inch sticking out of the tool. And I'll show you how brilliantly this NICOP tubing flares. I mean, it has really proven to be a wonderful discovery. Thank you very much, Uber Tanker, for introducing me to this because I think I will be a convert for the rest of my car tinkering days. And just put your, make sure that you have the right flaring tool on there. And then it's just tighten it down. I just double check it as I tighten. Pretty good. The funniest part or the most aggravating part is that when you get this intricate bend and everything done and then you forget to put your collar on. Comment in the comments if you've done that because just share the pain. It's happened to all of us. All right, so what I like to do now is just clean up the end of this thing. Now you can sand and treat your lines however you like. Like this, my uh, clamp here leaves a little bit of a, a mark here on the bottom of the tube. So I just scotch bright it a little bit, just take some of the evil off of it. But mostly I'm just taking any imperfections out of the actual flare here for sure. And you'll blow your lines out, of course, before you put them in for final plumbing. And you can kind of see that as you scuff this stuff, it becomes even prettier. I mean, this stuff is really cool. I am a, a huge fan. Converted. And then we will go and drag this back underneath the car. And... I haven't already installed the hangers in the places that I want. But let's go see how this worked. And this is our final tube. All right, let's get that under the car. The rear axle has a T fitting like the front with a flex line connecting it to a bulkhead on the chassis. And this hard line simply connects the master cylinder to that fitting at the rear of the car. I used three rivet nuts and collars to secure the line under the transmission tunnel very near the stock routing points. All right. That seemed to get the last bend pretty good. Seems happy. Threads on perfectly. And there you have it. Looks pretty good. Put my last secure mounting clip there. So I'll take everything back apart, blow everything out, tighten it up for final, put the thread sealant in where it belongs, and then the next video on brakes will show you how to bleed this stuff. But there you go. It was a good day. Uh, you know, just hunkered in, got this stuff done. You can see it's not real hard. It's just tedious. You gotta take your time to do it right. And I still had time to kick the soccer ball for Pinto a bunch. She needed a lot of that. So it was a good productive day. Back to work tomorrow. And time for an adult beverage to celebrate.
Until next time, enjoy your drive. Looks good.